today I decided to make a tutorial um, on how to create a tech at Minecraft server through Fragment's control panel. Um, I'll go ahead and go over some of the basics and um, also go over like a brief overview of uh, MC My Admin also. So right now I'm currently logged into the Fragment's um, game panel here. Generally, if you're a first time user and you log into this, um, uh, one of the icons you won't see is uh, the icon called Game Servers. This icon will only appear after you have created the game server. Um, same thing with the voice server. Uh, once you create the voice server, you'll actually see an icon for that also. So you can install like TeamSpeak or Rumble or, you know, um, I forgot what else they offer, but you do have that option. Um, so basically, the first thing you want to do is just go into the create a game server icon. Um, when you go down here um, for server, you know, generally you only have uh, one option there unless you have like multiple dedicated servers for that, I guess. Um, all right, so the next option is the game type. When you click on this drop down, this is kind of where you're going to be able to select um, some of the general uh, game servers you can create from Fragment. Uh, when you when it comes to Minecraft, you'll actually see like uh, three selections actually. Uh, the very last one being uh, XFS Minecraft. Uh, this one I'm not quite sure what this one does. Um, Minecraft Classic. This is the free Minecraft version, and uh, the one that just says Minecraft. That's just uh, the regular one, you know, that uh, the premium account. So basically, your regular Minecraft. So go ahead and select that. Now, um, for server IP, you can, uh, it pr should be pretty self-explanatory, you know, just go and select any IP. Um, port is generally going to be automatically done for you. Uh, I believe that Fragnet, uh, they reserve like um, 10 ports for like certain things for just one server. So for instance, like if you set it to a default port of uh, 25665 and you decide to create a second server, um, on the same IP, you know, just make sure you use like port 25765 or um, 25, you know, uh, 675 because um, they reserve uh, 10 ports for various uh, things from uh, what I was told. So if you leave it on automatic um, and you, you don't change any of the ports around in this uh, configuration file, um, you know, Fragnet, it automatically does it for you. So that's what's really nice about this here. Now, um, for slots, uh, if you integrate MC, the MC My Admin panel uh, into the Minecraft server, uh, there is a certain guideline you need to kind of base everything off of. Um, basically, this is it right here. Uh, you can find this page by doing a Google search on uh, Fragnet Minecraft player slots. And you should be able to, um, I believe the first link should take you to this page here. Uh, this is where you're going to, there's a certain specific setting you need to know uh, to kind of allocate memory to the server. So with MC My Admin, you, it, you have to use the, uh, one of these settings here. So for now, as an example, um, I'm just going to dedicate, let's say, one gig to this server. Um, According to this system setting here, um, it's going to give me access to have a 12 player server and that dedicates like one gig to it. So uh, this does uh, come in handy here. But let's. So we'll go back here and we'll enter in 12. Um, and private, you can, you know, basically it should be self explanatory whether it's a, a private or a public server. Um, for the CPUs here, generally what I like to do is just feed one CPU for each server. So I'll go ahead and select uh, one that's available for me right now. Um, to interact with uh, desktop and only use default ports, I generally leave these uh, unchecked uh, by default. I don't know exactly what they do. So, uh, But for the host name, uh, you know, we can just put in whatever we want here. And this Archon password. This is basically going to be, I guess you could say, your FTP password. So, um, you know, you can, we'll just go ahead and create one. All right. And now 
basically, um, if you're just going to create, I guess, just a vanilla Minecraft server, you know, you can just start the server after creation. Uh, but generally with TechIt, uh, there's a few things you want to do first. So um, generally the way I do it is I leave it disabled um, and I'll go ahead and create the server. Uh, one thing here I forgot to go over is the uh, voice server settings. So when you set up a server, um, Fragment does give you the ability to create a voice server for it also. You know, so. As an example, if you enable this option and click on the drop-down, you'll see some, uh, the options that they give you. Um, I generally like using the TeamSpeak free. It seems to work fine. So you can select that. Once you select that, um, you know, again, you got to locate uh, your server. Once you've done that, um, you know, here we go with the IP again. Slots um, here, I don't think there's a dedicated uh, chart you need to go off of or a specific setting. So um, for now, I'll just put template, say. And um, you know, you can dedicate a password to it if you wanted to make it a private server. Um, otherwise, you know, you can leave it open to the public. Uh, for the server name, you know, obviously you can just put in whatever you want to put in there, and then you can just go ahead and hit create. Now, you'll get a message saying that a new game server is being created and that you'll receive an email when the game server is ready to use. Now, generally with my experience um, with Fragnet is this is usually done fairly quickly. You know, you shouldn't have to wait more than like two minutes. So um, once you go back and the server is created, you know, you'll see this game server's icon. You just go into it there. Now. These are the ones that I currently have existing right now, but the one we just created shows up down here. So what you want to do at this point is just click on the IP address and it'll take you into a more detailed section of that server. So now once you're in here, um, if you're going to go install uh, certain things like uh, let's say you need essentials or in this case here we need to put in uh, tech it. So what you want to do is go into the game mods icon. Once you're into the game mods icon, um, click on the drop down, and you'll see a bunch of options here. So um, again, another nice thing about this uh, fragment panel here is uh, a lot of the common mods that you need are uh, available, and it's kind of like a one-click installation. Uh, generally, first thing I do is install uh, MC My Admin, which is kind of like a game control panel that allows you to change, um, it, it's kind of like a control panel for your Minecraft server. So, you know, uh, I'll get into that uh, in a minute here. But for now, um, we'll go ahead and just go ahead and install this. And again, um, you'll receive an email when it's installed. Now, um, again, this does take about one or two minutes to do. Once that's done, we'll go back into game mods. And generally, if it's already installed, when you go back in here, you'll have to see this drop down option. Um, otherwise, if it's still installing, you'll usually see some sort of message indicating it's still installing. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and install uh, the tech it mod. Um, you know, you can go with um, the recommended build or you can go with the latest build. So for now, um, I'll just go with the recommended build. Install that, and again, you'll see that message and get an email about that. And once it's done, we go back into game mods again, and now we get to install some of the uh, basic plugins. So, um, some of the ones that they offer is Essentials, um, you got Group Manager, World Edit, Factions, um, World Guard, and uh, Dive Manager. So what you want to do here is you can install like the basic plugins like um, these right here and it'll again go through the whole same process saying that it installed um, and you'll receive an email once it's uh, installed. Um, for now, I guess I'll just go ahead and install Essentials uh, for now. Alright, so now generally once all the mods are installed, uh, that's when I'll go ahead and start the server for the first time. Oops. And then from here, um, I'll 
I'll go over some of these icons right now. Uh, generally with MC, if you're going to use the MC My Admin, um, some of these settings actually are, you can find in MC My Admin. So you can just jump into this right away. Otherwise, if you're not using MC My Admin, this is where you can kind of control uh, some of the server side stuff. So this is uh, the creation of the server. So if you wanted to adjust any stuff, you can adjust it here. Um, server properties here um, you got you're gonna have to log back into your uh, you know game panel again and it's gonna take you to a different section of the area now once you're in there um, it's basically the server properties file uh, listed in um, a easy to read layout and easy to configure layout so you can do it that way um, you got your default config files here so um, you know, like your office list, uh, the band list, and all that. Uh, they gave you the option to edit if you needed to. Um, so it makes it pretty simple. And let's see, file manager. This can be used whether you're using uh, MC My Admin or not. It's basically, you know, your FTP access here. The only thing you really can't do is download from here. All right. Now, server logs, game updates, all this should be self explanatory. Um, nothing really required here. Uh, so now we'll go into MC My Admin. All right. So now, once you're in here, um, what you want to do is let's see. All right. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I had to cut the video for a second. Uh, got a phone call. But um, so I went ahead and logged into MC My Admin. Now, here, uh, your status section here. This kind of basically, you know, just shows you the status of the server, where the CPU usage is at, how many players are online, uh, where your RAM usage. Um, here, you have your options. You know, your one-click buttons to stop, sleep, or restart the server. Um, the next option down is your console. Now, basically, you know, it's just the console of the game. So this should be self-explanatory. Um, now, users and groups. Now, this is kind of where MC My Admin does come in pretty handy. Uh, let's say you decide to use MC My Admin and Group Manager and all that, and you installed Group Manager. Um, if you wanted to use MC My Admin to control it all, uh, what you need to do is um, basically go into the configuration and set it up that way, which I'll show you uh, a little later. But let's say you have everything set up already. This is where you can add, um, you know, users, uh, groups, and uh, you know, the permissions um, all through here. So it does make it pretty simple, and it gives you the options to change, you know, the prefix and all that, and whether they can build or not, allow for interaction and all that. So it, it does make it pretty simple. Um, the schedule here is where you know you kind of control, uh, like the messages or how often it saves and all that here so um, you know this is all just default settings you can uh, add new events if you want to um, so that's pretty uh, much where you can control um, like the saving process and all that uh, backups it's basically uh, self-explanatory you know you can delete the world uh, create backups for the world and all that through here um, configuration this is kind of where um, if you're going through, if you weren't using MC My Admin, you know how when you're in the Fragment game panel, you have to go through server properties. But uh, with MC My Admin, everything is actually available through this configuration section here. So this first tab, game settings, you know, um, basically you can change your game modes here. Uh, server settings, you can go ahead and you know change the message of the day, the type of server, and all that through here. Um, Features. So this is kind of where it gets a. This is where it gets a little important here. Um, you know, you, so you can do the server name, the welcome message, and all that here. Um, you can do the server sleeping option. Basically, you know, if this if there's no players on the server, you can set it to you know automatically go to sleep to try to save some of the resources. Uh, generally, I don't really like uh, enabling this option. Um, I've ran into some problems with it trying to get out of sleep mode on uh, like just one of my servers. 
so uh, generally I change this to no. Um, what's also nice here is the permissions exporting uh, mode. This is where um, your permissions are going to kind of come into play. So um, if you installed the uh, permission mod, uh, let's just go ahead and pretend we installed group manager. Um, what you can do here is click on the drop down and basically you're telling uh, MCMyAdmin, hey, my permissions are going to be coming from this particular program and you can uh, select it and it's going to one thing that you need to be really careful about this section here is every time you uh, you know click OK, it's going to overwrite the existing information. So this is where you want to be really careful. But you know you hit OK and it'll override it, and then it'll start. Um, so in other words, if you have an existing group manager and you enable this option um, after you let's say uh, uploaded that file. Um, if you enable that option, what's going to happen is it's going to literally overwrite that file. So the permissions you all had on there is going to get erased. So um, generally, I found that it's a lot easier for me to just go ahead and just start from scratch again. So I won't import anything. I'll install all my plugins and everything. And uh, then I'll just go in through the users and groups section and just set it up that way here. Um, What's also nice is they have a plugins feature right here where you can um, manage your existing plugins and you know search for um, some other plugins you may want to install. So that's what's nice here. Um, preferences, you know, you can change the color, uh, the layout of it look, and login users. This is where you can actually create. Um, let's say you had another admin that you wanted to, you know, have access to MC my admin this is where you can actually create that and uh, limit you know uh, their permissions to it so um, you know this comes in handy if you need multiple people to be able to you know monitor uh, servers and stuff for you um, yeah and that's pretty much about it um, they keep it pretty simple um, it's fairly easy to use um, yeah, so that's pretty much about it right there. Alright, well, thanks for watching.